Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home to move to a tiny, nearly 200-year-old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week, we continue working against the clock in the buyer with our friend Ian. And I'll show you how I restored a century-old stoneware ginger beer bottle from my hometown. Plus, we do some more foraging in the Glen. Join us as we continue... Live in the skyline. It's a beautiful day, and we really should be inside editing a video. Yes, we should. <laughs> but we're doing this instead. This is the original door inside the buyer, and uh, as you can see, it's got this like dusty paint on it. I'm a little bit worried it might be lead paint or something horrible. I don't want that inside the buyer now, so I'm going to varnish it, which is what I'm doing now. So. You, no, guys, if you didn't get a video this week, this is why. <laughs> Sorry about that. Listen to that bird song. Beautiful day, and Sarah's painting the door, and this beautiful sunny day. And Jack's chilling out in the sunshine. Look at this spring flowers and the bubbling brook or burn as they call them here and where's Willie going? Yep, I'm going here to edit a video because that's what we do That's dedication for you Beautiful sunny day and I'm going to be sitting there because it's a Saturday and we've got to get the video out tomorrow So here we go, time for Edit Head The other side of the door, which will face into my studio, has been painted more recently, so I just gave it a quick sand down to remove the flaky bits of paint. I've sanded down this side of the door. Yeah, I quite like the distressed texture. Hi. I'm tempted just to do a bit of varnish over the top and preserve it. The only issue with that is that's not metal. That's MDF, which is pretty rubbish, and it's not painted, but we think we're gonna paint that MDF black because we had to get new hinges for it because the old ones were pretty goosed, shiny new black hinges, which I think will look all right, actually, but at least then that part will match. There you go. It looks a bit strange at the moment, but when you've got the three big black hinges. I think it'll actually fit in quite nicely. Yeah, I think that'll look pretty cool. What do you think, Jack? Approved? We're on day three of the internal build. And we're looking forward to this, but we've run out of materials. So Sarah is currently looking into what we can do to get some materials delivered here today, or we may have to get in the van and go and get them ourselves. But the first thing we're going to do is get back to the floor and finish this corner down here, which I'll show on screen now. And uh, yeah, let's get on. You excited? Day three, still smiling. Hey, just, just. just. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to it. So we got started. Meanwhile, Sarah was in the cottage calling suppliers to get hold of more materials. We'd find out soon if the supplier would deliver or if we'd need to drive to Portree and collect the materials ourselves. Here he is, and here's his wagon. Hello! And there's his roof bars up there. Yay! Why are you putting the roof bars on? Because our calculations of how much material we needed was actually... Uh, well, we've got the floor spot on. We've got exactly enough for the floor. Then we realised there's not much left for the walls, so... Uh... So we're both going to Portree in both vehicles to get lots of bits of wood. 
Excellent. Thank you. And here we are, we're all loaded up, both vehicles ready to rock. Let's do this. Okay, we've got some more wood and there's more on Ian's van. And now we can carry on with the job. Feels great. So with the new materials, it was time to complete the floor. We have now completely finished the floor. Yay! Hooray! And now we've got to do all the rest. <laughs> Ian got his laser line out and we set about constructing the frame that would become the internal walls of the two studio rooms. We were building it as two rooms inside a larger room. This way the anti-rot treated wood wouldn't come in contact with the cold stone walls, adding further moisture protection later on with waterproof insulation boards and a waterproof membrane before the plasterboard finally was fitted on top of it all. We've been looking at putting the ceiling in it, but I've been looking at these beams, which I know are not old. I, I like old buildings, you know, the buildings with the white plaster ceilings and the, you can see the beams. So what I think we should do is actually, instead of putting plasterboard on these beams, we should put the insulation and the plasterboard between the beams. So you can still see the wooden beams. I think it'll give it an oldie worldy sort of taverna type of feel. I think it'll be really nice. Sounds great, let's do that. With Ian's plan in mind, we started building the partition wall and hung the door, which is the original buyer door that Sarah and I restored earlier in this video. It's the end of day three in the Sky Life Cottage and who lives behind a door like this? Let's find out! Get out of here! Get off our land, it's private! So you come and help and as soon as I finish with you, you get cast aside. Get out of here you, take your blooming greyhound with you. <laughs> <laughs> well that was a success today, we got this door in, this new door's opened for us. So tomorrow we're going to look at the plasterboard and the insulation for the walls and also construct the rest of the walls. It's going to be a busy day as was today, as was yesterday, as was the day before and in my case on this project for as long as I can remember. See you in the next bit. It's a glorious day here on the Isle of Skye today and me and Jack have come down to the beach because growing here is lots of beautiful gorse and we're going to collect some of the gorse flowers and we're going to use those flowers to flavour a cordial. I've got all the gear, I've got a cloth bag and I have a glove because gorse bushes are incredibly spiny and sharp. I did get quite up close and personal with these gorse bushes a couple of weeks ago when we did the beach clean and I can safely say the spines are not to be taken lightly so I've brought my protective equipment and hopefully I can collect them with minimal injury. <laughs> So let's head out and gather some gorse flowers. I can confirm. Wearing gloves is definitely necessary. Look at these spines. They are vicious. It just smells so much like coconut. So I'm really hoping that comes across in what I make. Further over there, there's loads more gorse bushes. So I think I'm gonna try there as well. And I'll get a chance to try out my new wellies because I'll have to cross the river. Let's go. You can see the horses there. And there's also sheep in the next field over. And it's lambing time, so I don't want to take Jack near them. So we'll go the slightly longer way around. probably have plenty now. There's no short supply of gorse flowers.
smell really nice. I'm going to make some cordial, mm -hmm. but I was instructed to get something else from the supermarket for you. White rum. I'm going to make Malibu, which is like white rum with coconut. So this is going to be Malibu Sky Style. For my cordial, I'm going to use a recipe from eatweeds.co.uk and I will put the link in the video description below. I'm going to need gorse flowers, obviously, but as well as that, I am going to need some water, some caster sugar, the zest of an orange and some lemon juice. So I'm just going to let that sit in a rolling bubble for a minute or two because that should make sure that the final syrup ends up clear and not cloudy. While the sugar syrup was bubbling away, I got on with the rum for Willie. In a clean jar, I mixed the rum with about 50 grams of caster sugar and two large handfuls of gorse flowers, before giving it a gentle shake to start dissolving the sugar. Okay, that's been bubbling away and I'm going to take it off the heat, or I just did. And then I'm going to put in the zest of an orange and then the juice of a lemon. All I need now is the gorse flowers. Four big handfuls. We're going to leave that one overnight to infuse and we're going to leave that one for a few days that's the rum and we're going to shake it every now and again and hopefully in a couple of days we'll have some lovely flavored drinks now who's gonna clean up oh you came back did you is it because you know there's sausage rolls on the counter probably As usual, it's a beautiful, sunny, glorious day, so we're going to spend the whole day inside that building. Can't wait to get started, because then we get finished. Yeah! So we set about building more of the timber frame. The plasterboard was only used here as a guide to show us where to place the cross joists. This is the last nail for the frame. That's flipping That's solid. That's flaming surprisingly solid, isn't it? Oh no, I shouldn't be surprised because we did it. We finished the frame and now it's time to do everything else. We've got the plasterboard, the insulation up. Well, that's an amazing achievement for us in the short time that we've been doing this to get the floors down, insulated, membraned, and all the walls up, or the frames anyway. So on to the next bit. On to the next bit. Onwards and onwards. Yeah. <laughs> chin chin. Time for Ian to start doing the electrical gubbins, as he calls it, and I'm going to do this, which is expanding foam. I've done it already, but there's still little bits that I need to finish off, and we're going to finish the walls now, so I have to get this in. It's getting there. Electrics, always a big deal. If there's a bang and a flash, you'll know what happened. It's probably his fault. Definitely my fault. <laughs> Here, Ian, a qualified electrician, was building a frame to support the fuse box, a separate one that can be isolated from the existing fuse box in the cottage. Here is our electrical box that Ian has just put in, which looks amazing. And then we'll go and see what I've been doing. I'm back on insulation duty, so I've just fitted that in there. And because these joists aren't exactly true, I mean, none of this building is, it's such an old building, everything's slightly wonky. So you have to cut them to size, which I've just been doing. And then I'm going to take it out again because Ian's still got to put the electrics in. Looks like there's a bit of traffic up ahead. And now we've got more new neighbours. Hey, Koozies. There's one unwilling. Go on, you can do it. Sarah and I were fitting more waterproof insulation boards as Ian ran the electric cables safely around the construction. I'm extremely happy because I just cut this board first time without any adjustments at all. That's the first time this has happened on this whole build. Yes! <laughs> you can tell no one's been playing with Jack because there was a collection of bits of wood just inside the house. Hey pups, we've been ignoring you. Sorry. It's another wee milestone there. Got all the insulation in on this side. On the walls anyway. Still gotta do the ceiling. Which should be fun. We are one, 
two, three, no, three and a half sort of sections done. One more to go for now. You guessed it, more insulation. Sarah and I were cutting the extremely reflective insulation boards in full sunshine, which could be quite dazzling, but we were getting the job done nonetheless, with Jack and De Niro's help, of course. insulation on the floor to the ceiling and now we've got to do the ceiling. Now insulating the walls was fairly challenging but the ceiling was next level metaphorically and literally. We have now insulated the roof of this part and also well I'll have a little have a look around. Ooh. <laughs> it's all been done in this part. This part we're doing tomorrow. It's crazy the amount we've done today. Look at this. And then Ian has also fitted the lights, which is why you're seeing this panel over here. It's not in situ yet, but it's going to be Ooh. so good. And it's just crazy, like, from how it was this morning till now. But then again, it's half past eight at night. In fact, it's after that now. Um, so we've been working we've not crazy hard. Yet. And we haven't even looked at putting the dinner on yet. Hey. Well, here he is. Here Mommy he is. Yahweh, the bringer of light. The light of your life. He is the bringer of light. <laughs> oh dear. None other than Ian. Hello. Well done, everyone. What a day. What a day. Woo what a day. Good effort. Good effort all round. Some of you may know about my other YouTube channel, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, or a search for the treasures of Scotland in the ground. I found this ginger beer bottle that needed a repair. I like to repair these old things if I can, so I think you may want to watch this. I picked up this beautiful antique ginger beer bottle from Kirkcaldy in Methuselah's, which is an antique shop on the high street run by John. Now he did me a great deal on this because it's had a repair in the past. And the repair itself, the actual clay work or the putty work is pretty good, as you can see. However, the paint work looks like it was done by someone wearing a welder's helmet in the dark in a cave. So I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it better, I hope. I've probably just jinxed myself. Anyway, let's give it a shot and see what I can do. On the top here, I'm just going to take back some of this glaze that someone's put on there. There's a couple of chips. Here's one, and I want to smooth that out before I start painting it myself. Chances are you're going to start seeing some milliput coming through, which is the putty they've used to fix it, which is the putty I used to fix them as well. So the first thing as I say I'm going to do is just use some sandpaper, I'll do that first. Alright, that's the sandpaper done. It didn't take long, and you can see the milliput shining through there, it's that sort of off-green colour. Now I'm going to start painting. Let's get on with it. Okay, here's the colours that I can see in the bottle that I think I'll need. I'm going to have to mess around and try and get this right. So I'm going to do that in the window because I can always see better in the natural light than at this table. So I'll do that now and yeah, I'll come back when it's mixed. So that's my mixing plate there. I'm quite happy with what I've got. This is my palette. So this paint here is pre-mixed. I'm just going to put it straight on the bottle and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's had one coat already. I'm far happier with that. There's more to do though. I'll do another coat and then we'll do more from there. Okay, time for coat number two. Now, as a base coat, I'm happy with that, but it's a flat color. What I'm gonna do now is mix two different colors. One this light color, and two the slightly redder colour and I'm going to mottle them on with a sponge. So I'm going to take this paint, I'm going to mix it two different separate little areas with different colours so I can get the lights 
and the darks. So this is my lightest color here, and this is my darkest color here, and this is a makeup sponge, which is what I'm going to use to do the mottled effect. Now I can always take it back again with the original color if I need to, so you don't have to worry too much. Okay, time to put on some of the original colour again because I went a wee bit crazy with that but still looks good. Okay, that's the uh, sort of original colour back in and it's nice and graded now, it looks good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this slightly redder colour which is the third colour. So let's do that. New sponges please. pretty happy with that. All I need to do now is glaze it and then I can see if it's a colour match. So next up is the glazing process and then we'll be able to see if it's good. Here we go. This is Rustin's ceramic glaze. I've just put it in a little pot because it dries out really quickly. Let's see how this looks with the glaze on it. You just don't know how good it's going to be or bad it's going to be until you put the glaze on. You can't tell. I think I've got the colour right but I don't know. Early signs are good, it needs three more coats and after that I'll be able to tell. But I'm not going to film all of that because doing the same thing three more times is really boring. I'll come back when it's done. It's day five and we've done really well so far in spite of mishaps and things but uh, we're really looking forward to getting this done so we're going to put some joists up here first and then we're going to start putting up the uh, what's it called? Plasterboard. Plasterboard, that's what he yeah, said, right. Okay. Technical consultant. <laughs> <laughs> Plasterboard, right. Plasterboard's going up next. Ian had to leave later that evening so we decided to install the waterproof membrane and the plasterboard only in the areas he would fit the lighting and the power sockets, then Sarah and I could finish everything else once he had gone. We have half a wall so far, we don't have even half a ceiling yet so... Uh... So this is our lovely membrane to hopefully stop any moisture that comes from the stone. The insulation is in behind the uh, membrane and the whole thing is constructed as a room inside a room. We're not touching the wall at all anywhere. It's starting to take shape, yep. The next bit's the good bit, the next bit the light goes up in this room. And we can oh. uh, get an idea how it's finally gonna look with the ceiling. Oh my gosh. How exciting. Let's do it. This is our very first bit of plasterboard ceiling going to go up there. <laughs> Plus a light fitting to go there as well. How are you feeling? Nervous. Excited. It was time to get the ceiling panels of plasterboard fitted that would support the lighting panels. Now, with Ian leaving shortly, we were very much against the clock by this point, so we didn't have time to address the camera as much as we usually do. So this process is captured here entirely with time-lapse footage, as it was very much all hands on deck. It's Friday, Ian got here on Monday okay. and now he's leaving on Friday evening and in that time we have got so much done. We have lights, we have Starlink internet in here as well. We have 
walls now. We, we have, have floors. Floor. We have basically a building. We've still got bits to do, but not much. Ian has basically just completely transformed this place. So thank you, man. We really thank appreciate you so it. Much. It's been fun. It's been it has been fun. It's, it's been, been testing at times. You guys managed good. not to kill each other. I think we ended up about 50 50 on the old. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing, you idiot? What are you talking about now? After about, like, I don't know, working straight for like 11 hours, yeah. you start looking at each other as if to say, what are you talking about? It's because your brain is so What language slow. are you speaking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. But it's done, there's electricity and there's light. But the difference in this place, the way it feels, is just incredible. Yeah. You, you can't describe it because the first time I walked into this on Monday morning, it was an empty, dirty, dark, dank space. And now, mm. you, know, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Bright yeah. light. Wow, both of them. Look, watch this, I'm going to do the dimmer. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Let's try this out. Ooh. <laughs> cool. So yeah, thanks again, man. This has just been absolutely amazing. It's been brilliant. It's been it's been most enjoyable. We totally owe you. Next time I come here, I am not bringing any tools at all. Nothing. No, nothing. I'll bring a fishing rod and <laughs> yeah. a bottle of whiskey, which we will drink, and I will pay for. Yeah, it. yeah. There's nothing we really want to do now than just share a few beers all together and chill out after completing so much stuff. But yeah. time to get home. But Ian's got to drive all the way back to Fife, which yeah. is about what five and a half hours. Five hours ish. Everyone out there, say yay for Ian. Three, two, one. Yay! yay! For Ian! <laughs> Good mug. Good mug. Good mug. Good mug. <laughs> yay! yay! <laughs> See you later! Just wanted to say a big thanks to Ian for all his help on this build project. Also, you can see his take on this build on his channel, Scotland on a Shoestring. It's Ian, his wife Bex, and of course, De Niro. I'll put a link to Scotland on a Shoestring in the video description below. If you haven't already, go over and give him a sub. I've come back to finish off this cordial. First thing I'm going to do is strain it. I've got a clean bowl and a linen tea towel. I'm going to pour all the syrup and the flowers onto that and hopefully strain out all of the flowers. And then once it's done, I'm going to pour it into a sterilized bottle, which is actually an empty whiskey bottle that we finished and I put in the oven for half an hour at 180 degrees to sterilize it. Once that's cooled down enough, I will pour the syrup into there and seal it and that will be our cordial. I hope it tastes nice. There it is, my gorse flower cordial. Now, am I brave enough to give it a go? Okay, here goes nothing. It kind of looks a bit like we. Sure, <laughs> it doesn't taste like it though. Hmm, that's well, quite nice actually. It's a very unique flavour. It's a little bit floral and a little bit coconutty. I'll go see what Willie thinks now. <laughs> Taste test number two. I'm busy working in the buyer and I've been brought this. It looks like urine. <laughs> it does. It's not bad. It, it doesn't taste like elderflower, which is a cord that we normally make. But... Yeah, well, it's not supposed to taste like elderflower. Oh well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> I would say that elderflower out of the two would definitely be my favorite. Mm. But... You'll just have to wait and see how your rum turns out. I'll stick to vitamin T. It's time. Is it going to be gorse happiness or gorse remorse? I'd like to point out that this glass is from the 1920s. I found that in a bottle dump. It has been scrupulously cleaned. Cheers. Chin chin. Is this going to be good? Who knows? Oh, mine's nice. This is actually really nice. Hey. 
I'm not even joking. It's actually really, really lovely. It's good. It, and I'm not just saying that because it's YouTube. It tastes like cola cubes. Huh. Do you know those little sweets? Yeah. Mmm. I would happily drink that all day. I probably shouldn't. Mm. But I would. I don't know if I want to try it. I don't like rum. Try it. Try it. I don't like rum or Malibu or cola. It's really nice. It tastes like Ooh. sweeties. Oh no, that is nice. It tastes like sweeties. I really like oh, it. Oh, that, that's actually quite dangerous. I'm going to shot it. That shot the rest oh. of it. Down in one. Oh, I forgot it was frozen. I'm going to tell it like it is. The syrup's a bit meh. But that is really, really nice. Yeah, the rum's nicer. Yeah. Oh. Mm, mm, but actually, I quite like this in the cocktail. We're gonna have to wrap this up because my arm is really hurting and I can't. And I can't seem to keep you in frame. <laughs> there we go. See you later. So there you have it. Ghost flower rum was a big hit with both of us. The ghost flower cordial not quite as nice as we were hoping. We thought it would taste more coconutty and it had a bit of a strange flavour to it. Definitely not as nice as elderflower cordial, which we'll hopefully be making in a few weeks' time. I'm not sure if I would make it again. I might try and do it slightly differently if I did. So maybe adding the flowers after the sugar syrup has cooled properly because I don't know if that created the slightly weird flavour that came across. It's still nice in the kind of mixed drinks, but it's not something I would drink by itself as a cordial. So you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Definitely worth a go, I really enjoyed it and we're definitely gonna finish off that rum for sure. Here's the bottle, and I wanted to do this outside so you could see it in natural light. I definitely think that's an improvement on before. I'll put up before and after pictures, but I'm really happy with that. The shading around the top here especially, it looks natural, it looks very similar to this. And uh, yeah, I'll get those pictures up for you to look at now. Thank you so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like, leave us a comment below and consider subscribing to our channel if you don't already. It's free to do, it's really cool and you get notified when our new videos come out. Also, if you want to, you can buy us a coffee over on Ko-fi and if you wanted to, you could buy Jack a treat there as well. If you want to help us out more long term, you can become one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon. You get loads of bonus content over there for helping us out every month. All the links to our pages are in the video description. Hello. As you know, we moved here in December of last year and we haven't actually had a week off since then. So next week, we're going to take a little break. We're having one week off. We hope you don't mind out there. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in... Da, da, la, da, da. Two, Two weeks! weeks. <laughs>
bloopers. Yeah, this yeah, is hi. how I normally film. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi, everyone. Yeah, my chin. See you later. No, don't show them how messy it is. Look how messy it is. <laughs> Whoa. She can pass out now. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in two next weeks. Next week. No, oh, no, next week. In two weeks. Yeah. You've you've just okay, said it. Right. Go again. Go again. Ah, oh, amateur. <laughs> if you click on the left icon, you can subscribe to Living the Sky Life. If you click on the right icon, it will take you back to our very first episode.